fooled if you're asked this question at a fund accounting interview or with an investment banking interview. And the question being, is tender offer of buyback of shares a mandatory corporate action or a voluntary corporate action? Hello everybody and welcome to this video on understanding the different types of corporate actions and how are they classified on the basis of whether it's a mandatory corporate action or a voluntary corporate action. I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan and if you're interested in a career in investment banking operations, trade life cycle, OTC derivatives and hedge fund accounting, you subscribe to my channel where we provide content centric research focused videos on these topics. Let's go straight into the topic. As we already know, a corporate action is a initiation of an activity around the securities issued by a company which impact the structure of the security, thereby impacting the investor's wealth and holding in that particular company. Let's make these things even simpler. When a company announces an activity, an action that changes the structure of equities, bonds, preference shares that are held by the general public, then it is called as a corporate action. Okay, so corporate action is initiated by the issuer, it impacts the investor. If these two criteria are met, it is called as a corporate action. There are so many announcements a company makes in a year. Changing of the CEO, appointment of a new board member, etc. All these announcements are not corporate actions because they do not impact the structure of the security that the investor is holding. So fundamentally analyze this. For that, you have to know what every corporate action means. Okay? So two things first. Corporate action is initiated by the issuer, it impacts the securities that are held by the investor, any one of them, okay, in fact all of them, right, as long as there is a public holding and there is an investor holding in those securities and there is an initiation of a change in the structure of that securities that are held, whether it's equity instruments, whether it's DVR, whether it's bonds, whether it's fully convertible bonds, or whether it's preference shares, whether it's an ADR, anything. All of them will come under the categorization of uh, corporate action, okay? So that's the first learning that is issued, announced by the issuer, impacting the investor. Second, corporate action must necessarily impact the response of the investor, okay? So the way we know whether it's mandatory or voluntary is does the investor need to respond and react to this corporate action, okay? So mandatory corporate actions are those for which investor response is not needed. Whereas a voluntary corporate action is where investor response is needed, okay? A mandatory corporate action therefore includes dividends, stock splits, bonus announcements, dividends on preference shares, coupon payments to the bondholders. All these would come under the category of mandatory corporate action. It is mandatory for the investor to accept the corporate action. That is the meaning of mandatory corporate action. Okay, If, if, if uh, I own Infosys shares and Infosys announces a dividend, I cannot say, no, I do not want this dividend. I can say I do not like the rate of dividend or something like that, but that should have gone into the AGM or the pre-AGM activities. But over here, I cannot say, no, I do not want a dividend. No, I do not want a stock split. They're giving me free bonus shares, okay? And I think, no, 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 I don't want them. Do you, you know, I, would, I, ref I refuse to have them. I want to have the same existing shares, etc. So all these things come under the categorization of mandatory corporate actions. On the other hand, Voluntary corporate actions are those where investor response is needed and the issuer can act only according to how the investor has participated. For example, a company announces a rights issue. A rights issue is an issue where the company uh, gives the opportunity 
to the existing shareholders to buy new shares of the company at a price that is much lower than the current market price in a predetermined stock or a swap ratio, in a predetermined entitlement ratio. This brings us to the point of what happens when a voluntary corporate action is announced. When a cor voluntary corporate action is announced by the issuer, the issuer's uh, registrar and transfer agent will be waiting for what would be the investor's response to that. For example, if the company announces a rights issue and the investor wants to apply for the rights, then they will advise their custodian to accordingly make the participation alive in the rights issue. If on the other hand, they want to sell their rights, they can sell their rights to another investor. If on the other hand, they want to simply renounce their rights and let the opportunity pass by, then they can do so as well. This brings us to the most important aspect of understanding the investor's response. The investor's response is very important. If the investor doesn't respond, then there will have to be a de facto announcement, a de facto action. For example, if a right issue is announced, an investor has not participated in their rights, nor have they sold their rights, it means automatically the transfer agent will assume that the rights has been renounced or has been surrendered. Okay, So voluntary corporate actions and mandatory corporate actions, for to classify them requires an understanding of the underlying corporate action. Okay. On the other hand, there are other corporate actions like tender offer when a company is doing a buyback of shares or when they're doing a buyback of shares for mergers and acquisitions, etc. Then they have to approach shareholders. In this case, also shareholders participation is necessary in order to complete the corporate action. Therefore, it is also called as a voluntary corporate action. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, do write in over here where we will try our very best to make a little video out of it and starting a new series on Asha, Ask Sushila Harihar and anything about concepts in investment banking, trade life cycle, OTC derivatives and hedge fund accounting.